Hi, I'm Skip Campbell with the Michigan Surgical Quality Collaborative, and I'm here with Jim Lynch, who's a colorectal surgeon from Beaumont Troy Hospital. Uh, as we've looked through our results from colectomy over the past year or so, um, it was nice to notice that Beaumont Troy did very well in terms of results. They had a very low rate of complications, and so in the spirit of disseminating best practices, uh, we thought we'd talk to Jim for a few minutes and ask him uh, what he thinks some of the most important uh, factors are in the, in the uh, fact that he's got very good results. So, Jim, tell us what you think is important. Well, you know, as you and I have discussed in the past, uh, I can probably best tell you what I think is important in my group, uh, and that is a pretty strict adherence to standardization. We prep all the patients the same way. How? We use a, a oral mechanical prep okay. and an oral antibiotic prep on everybody. Okay. Uh, we use a, what do you use specifically? We use, currently we're using Miralax and Gatorade as an oral mechanical oh. prep. Okay. But uh, I'm not sure that that's, uh, any mechanical prep would probably suffice. And we use oral antibiotics. We use a neomycin base, one gram, and 500 milligrams of flagell. Okay. Three doses uh, the day before the surgery. Okay. And we don't do any special showers or skin preparation. Uh, we just simply admit the patient the next day. We uh, ask that all the patients be prepped with uh, a uh, long-acting abdominal skin preparation, like a dural prep, or a clog prep. Okay. And uh, we do the majority of our cases as I believe you know laparoscopically. All right. Who does the prep? The nurse. The nurse does. The nurse does. Nurse does. And uh, we we do the majority of our cases laparoscopically. But um, uh, one thing we do have is the pretty much a dedicated team. I do get occasional stragglers of new nurses coming in. Uh, but by and large, it's a pretty experienced team we work with uh, all the time. And I think that keeps our operative time down which is very, very important. Uh, well, Montreux is not a teaching hospital, at least not for surgical residents. And our surgical residents from Royal Oak and McCullough and Rectal Fellow does not rotate out of the So little teaching. But Jim, I remember from talking with you about this before, you, it was interesting to me that you uh, positioned everybody in a, in a little different way. Want to talk about that for a minute? One thing we came up with years ago, and. Uh, actually looked into trying to develop new apparatuses to hold the patients stable. Uh, and one of the things that allows us to do the operation relatively quickly is we looked at ways to secure them on the operating table. Uh, otherwise, you're really limited how you can turn them. So I put everybody in lithotomy. <clears throat> I put everybody in lithotomy on a bean bag, a very large, extra large bean bag. And the bean bag sits on uh, an ortho pegboard. And believe it or not, the ortho pegboard is anchored to the table, and the bean bag then can be molded to the top of the bean bag up near the shoulders, and then I pad the shoulders well. Uh, and then the bean, the uh, pegboard has the uh, almost we call them nunchucks, but they're rods so that can go in to anchor the patient at the shoulders, so that then the arms and the shoulders are secure, and you can go left, right, very steep, and from Nellenberg very steep and you can get the camera in very creative positions when the patient's in the phone. Okay. So you're talk when you're talking about doing these laparoscopic procedures, either hand-assisted or not hand-assisted? Uh, the vast majority, probably 90 plus percent of mine, are just pure laparoscopic. Uh, and occasional hand-assisted, predominantly for the distal rectal cancers, where you need the wrist, where you need the articulation. All right, what about uh, antibiotic prophylaxis? Uh, clearly, we're trying to behave and, and uh, follow the SCIP guidelines. Everybody is getting the recommended preoperative antibiotic within one hour. Which is in your? Uh, which, in, in our case, is a cefetanib, usually a gram, uh, uh, within one hour of the skin disease. Okay. So you get cefetanib. What about redosing? If, I know you're fast, but uh, if your case goes more than three hours, um, do you make special efforts to redose? I, I try, uh, but that's not part of our protocol, so I must admit I can't really comment how much that is done. And it's uh, 
occasionally I notice my partners, probably more than I, will give an extra dose uh, periodically. And what about a great big fat person? Um, do you double the dose of 710 beforehand? Uh, actually, I have not. I have not. But uh, uh, I, I frankly haven't. Okay. So I can guarantee that's not been done. Okay, so what are some of the factors that would lead you to do a laparoscopic versus an open electron? Uh, and basically, it has to do with the size of the tumor. Um, if I think I can get it out without having to make a big laparotomy, in other words, if it, if it would not, uh, if it is not clear that it's grossly invading another organ, or that it is so big that it's going to require essentially an incision anyway to remove the specimen, I think that's probably a waste of time and money. Uh, but if it looks like I can get it out through a hand or, or smaller, I would I will try almost everything laparoscopically. Okay. Yeah. Good. And um, this, in the literature, there are some papers that suggest that IFIO2 might be helpful in colon surgery to prevent infection. And also, there's some data to suggest that fluid restriction during the course of colectomy is helpful. Do you follow any of those? Uh, Perception. No, we let uh, anesthesia run our FIO2. I've, I've, not, I've not requested that they alter their operative management at all. Um, and fluid restriction, basically the same thing. I, I feel the patients are rather fluid restricted anyway in the sense that they're not prehydrated. They might be in pre holding for an hour or so, but they all tend to behave as if they're pretty dry because they're not in the hospital the night before and they've, they've had a bowel breath. Do you double glove? Yes, I did. You did. I did. Okay, and then what about your colleagues? Yes. Uh, everybody knows. Everybody else? Yeah, pretty much. As a rule. Okay, now if you're going to do a case that's open, what about a wound protector? Um, do you use a wound protector? I, interestingly, uh, I do use, uh, just to go back to the laparoscopic cases, I remove every specimen, malignant or not, through a wound protector. Okay. There's a nice little product on there. You don't need to open the entire hand or you can just get the wound protector part of it. Do you remember what that's called? It's called the Alexis wound protector. Alexis. And they come in two or three different sizes and I usually get away with the small size which would be three or four centimeters in diameter. And you can remove, I remove diverticular abscesses and everything right through there. Uh, so I, I definitely do use a wound protector. If it's an open case, I really don't have anything that big anymore. We used to have that when I was a resident. I haven't seen it. Okay. There's some data out there that it's helpful, so in a randomized perspective trial I saw, it seemed to be quite normal. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up using a wound protector all the time on the cases, and I've gotten away with it for the, op for the open cases, uh, but I pretty much mandatorily use them for the open cases. Okay. Okay. Tim, there's a lot of interest out there about uh, temperature regulation during the course of surgery. Have you got any special thoughts on that? Uh, we do have uh, a bear hugger on our patients in Korea, and then I turn the temperature in the room up way up, much to the chagrin of some of the, my assistants, but I like the room pre warm before the patient comes in. Okay, yeah, I think that's important. Okay, well, Jim, uh, in a nutshell, you are into 10 minutes. I know it's easy, but uh, there were some uh, very important uh, points that I think you made, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Happy to be here.